Monday the 17th of October. We are two weeks away from Halloween and my haunted hotel is about to receive an influx of guests as people from all over the UK flock to the country's most haunted hotel. The Halloween decorations are up, the fires are roaring and it's that time of year when paranormal enthusiasts go crazy. So busy week at my haunted hotel this week, uh, every, every night's full, no breath this week. Which is kind of good because we're not cleaning up as crap all the time, so it'd be refreshing that the office stays nice and clean. Um, but looking forward to it. Obviously, still coming up to Halloween at the moment. Um, I feel like it's the most active time of year, the beginning of October. So let's see what happens. We have got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in multiple rooms on pretty much every single night. I think the energy levels throughout this building are going to be incredible. We managed to solidify the fact last week that the bangs and the knocks that are being heard throughout this building are actually being felt as well. We had a footstep detector outside of room 5 and when we placed everybody on the corridor we heard two significant bangs. The footstep detector actually jammed into place and then on the second bang it knocked off yet again. Incredible stuff, but that just backs up our theory that these bangs and knocks are being felt in the fabric of the building. We did hear dragging across the floor, footsteps in the corridor again, but I'm a big believer in energy. This week we've got loads of people in. I think the more energy we get, the more active it will be this week. That is Monday night here at my haunted hotel and one thing I made sure to do when I came in tonight was to take the GQ EMF detector over to the exact spot where the footstep detector went off last Monday. We are not reading any significantly high levels of electromagnetic field, radio frequency, the milligauss is just set to completely normal what you'd expect from a building like this in the middle of a city centre. It'd be interesting to set up the GQ there permanently and when we get these knocks and banging phenomena to see if there are any random spikes in the, in the fields there. It's just one that's very, very confusing at the moment because we don't know when they're going to happen, we don't know how they're going to happen and we don't know which area they are going to occur in either. Room 2 seemed to be the area where they were happening the most but it seems to now have gone back to the corridor and those footsteps that we heard last Monday as well were absolutely fantastic to capture on camera. Monday's guests have travelled all the way from East Anglia and are experienced paranormal investigators eager to check out My Haunted Hotel. They will be staying in room one as a busy week gets underway. Hi guys, so it's Monday night at My Haunted Hotel and I'm so excited tonight. Got my big boy Saul here. Uh, he's witnessing it all first hand to see how we work. Hopefully he'll be on board with us um, in the long run when we get my haunted mansion. So tonight we've got a couple from East Anglia. Um, four and a half hour drive up here I think it is, something like that he said. An absolute mission isn't it really? Yeah, um, seasoned paranormal investigators have a bit of equipment themselves so should be a fairly easily easy Night for us, really, shouldn't it? Should we say that again? It should be a fairly easy night tonight. It wouldn't be a My Haunted Hotel episode without Stelia stumbling on his words somehow. But we say that when we were doing our only little interviews before, Danny was the one who was stumbling and getting all his words. You're a liar. Why would you say such a thing? The Lies. Now, usually the first hour or two remain quiet, but all of a sudden, something happens in room one which confuses all of us, and I run upstairs to try and debunk it. What was that? What just happened there? Watch closely as the door to room one suddenly moves for no reason and we capture it on two cameras. Yeah. I have no idea why it happened because what you will see on the camera as well, you're sat on the bed, yeah. you're sat on the bed, you're not moving really yeah. no. and I'm just trying Like, you see me walking around here now. Yeah, it doesn't trigger the door off, does it? And even if I was to go outside... Yeah, yeah 
yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's yeah. Like if it was caused by footsteps moving the yeah, yeah. But not only that, you, you, your feet aren't on the floor. No, you, you're no. sat on the bed. Clear. Like this look. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's clear as day because we've got it on this camera. Yeah, it's no, like someone sort of put weight on it to come in, wouldn't it? Yeah, I, I would understand if maybe someone was moving in the corridor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we it honestly thought it was one of you guys coming up to us. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't really take much notice yeah. to begin with, did we? And then we were like, <laughs> Still shocked by this capture, Craig and Kelly move into room five, but nothing happens. And so we send them to room six. And within two minutes, we notice something. The doll's gone in five. Where, is that just gone now? I have no idea. We didn't see that. Look, on the kettle. Oh, thank you very much. That's brilliant. Can you do that again on the one on the other side? Or send off the REM pod, which is near the chair. Can you make the chair even rock, possibly? That would have been from me passing you that, would it, Matt? No. Did you put your foot on the floor? No. I just passed it like that, didn't I? Yeah, no, I wouldn't have done that. If you lit that ball up on the floor, can you do it again? Hi, my name's Craig. And I'm Kelly. Um, and we're, we're staying in room one. Tonight, which yeah. we've had a bit of um, activity already, straight away as we turned up. Um, basically, we're both sitting on the bed and we heard like a ba massive bang on the door and then they've confirmed to us on two cameras on the landing outside and inside that the door basically shut by itself yeah. so that's been quite a um yeah. impressive start to the we've, night so far and we've been informed that one of the dolls in room five, five yeah. has fell off after we've left and gone gone into room six yeah so as you know guys i'm really happy to have my son here tonight but the real reason i wanted him here tonight was for the viewers to see this good looking guy I'm looking for a wife with him, for him. <laughs> so, basically in Cypriot tradition, we need to find a suitable candidate to wow. marry Saul, so, basically. I agree, you know. Oh, really, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, any of the viewers? He'll be inheriting my going to the hotel one day, so... Should be okay in the future. He's got lovely hair. Oh, thanks. Big brown eyes. Beautiful big brown eyes. What what kind of wife are you looking for, Saul? You kind of like the Elati, you don't look, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> um, have you got something to tell us? Yeah. Well, I put the wrong hoodie on. I put my missus' size 6 hoodie on. So it's a bit sporty, really, isn't it? Yeah, now. The hours pass and no more activity is witnessed. Craig and Kelly attempt an SDS session in the downstairs bar, whilst Harry and Saul conduct an Intravox session in the brothel. I have plenty of questions for you guys. Do you like me giving out questions? For an hour straight, things remain inactive, and we decide that the best course of action is to join together in the old brothel, where I use a full spectrum camera, and the Intravox device continues to deliver white noise into the room. Charles. did things in this building. I know that you may have secrets here. Speak with me. Maybe you can show yourself to us. Can you walk through that doorway please?
Does it offend you, sir? Is it you that moves things, Charles? I see here around this table moved. What was that? A male voice is heard manifesting over the white noise, but we are unclear what this says. This is the only thing to occur. Monday's investigation finishes. Guys, we are back tomorrow. We have two rooms in, I think. And then obviously we've got another couple in on Wednesday and the big one on Thursday, four rooms in. It is a hectic week here at my haunted hotel. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Stelios, Tuesday night. We have Ghost Hunters of Cheshire. I think that's what they're called, yeah. Um, so two gentlemen, two ladies, seem really nice. Uh, brought us some cakes. Oh yeah, unlucky Brett. Ghostly Halloween brownies, I think. They look incredible to be fair, and I'm all about that tonight without Mr. Hustleberger. He did be, he was in contact today, wasn't he? Uh, he was showing us a big spider on the yeah. wall. Nope. Oh, nope, I can't, nope. <laughs> Have you got it? No, no. Move it this way, give it against the wall. Oh my god. This is horrible. Did you get it? You got it? Don't bring it towards me. <laughs> I will kill you. <laughs> They are staying in rooms one and three. Now, last night was really quite interesting and we did get a message through saying that something happened overnight. But unfortunately, the guys decided to have their cameras off, which we always advise against because if something happens, which last night it did, we have no access to it. So we did watch nine minutes of the corridor and they heard a high pitch streak, yes. which we couldn't hear, but there was some weird creaking, some yeah. weird sounds, but we don't know if it's coming from that room, so we're not going to include it in this episode. No. We know we know all the skeptics out there will basically say, if there's not another camera angle, then it could be caused by something else, and I do the, exactly the same, to be honest. So, bit of advice, if you come and stay here, leave your cameras on, guys, because otherwise, if something happens, we have no access to it whatsoever. But it is Stelios and me in for the long haul. Let's do this. <laughs> Quite nice, isn't it? Yeah. Go oh, open the wardrobe. Get the first one, Claire. Mmm. Ooh, oh, Manchester. Oh! My head's up, Brandon. I like the theme in this. Mirrors. So oh, people, dear me. People have seen stuff in mirrors, it looks like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. What are we doing here? We just oh, is that a doll? I think so. Mm. I know you said don't touch the cameras. I think you said, is that a doll? I'm sure there was two shut up. Hold on, there's a place in here as well. I think there's a bathroom there. I don't know, can you use your light? Come on, show yourself. Don't be afraid. Well, it's fair to say, Stelios, these are straight to the point, aren't they? They're right in there. Uh, show yourself. Show yourself. Straight away. Yeah, literally two minutes in. Show yourself. And um, I don't think the ghosts want to show themselves at the moment, do they? Not at the moment, no. But interestingly enough, last night, something happened early on in room one with that door slamming. Yeah. I Tried so. everything to debunk it and we couldn't. Mm -hmm. Saul had a good night last night, didn't he? It's it actually lovely having me son here, yeah. being part of it last night, I really enjoyed it. I was made up that in that final session, something actually came over the Intravox device and he was there to witness it, yeah. and his face said it all really, didn't it? And then when he drove back to Liverpool at night time, he texted me and said, I had a really good night tonight, Dad, and it was heartwarming. 
The four guests, who were all from the same team, immediately begin their investigation. And suddenly, Simon in room one begins to feel very strange. I've gone really light-headed. Have you? I've gone a bit headachey, but not... I've gone really, really light-headed. Dead dizzy. Just sit there. It feels like something's literally pushing me. I can't, I'm not even doing this myself. Spirit, if this is you pushing me, can you push a bit harder, please? Come on. We move the guests to rooms four and five, and this seems to trigger a response as strange events start to occur in multiple parts of the building. That's what the light brings now. <laughs> why, why are you laughing? Uh, do you want some cake? Mmm, cake. Mmm. Eat your heart out, bread germs. Ah, nice cup of tea and some cake. Oh, yeah. Do you have tea or is it just coffee, love? Uh, coffee on an investigation. Um, but you do drink tea? Yeah, and you know what? I might actually have a tea with some of this cake. Some cake? Cake. cake. Oh, well. <laughs> Come on, we're waiting for you, Charles. Did you take your shoes off? What? Guys? Guys, is that anyone there? <laughs> Something mad has just happened. It's really dark in here, by the way. I don't know if you can still see us. What the f was that, Harry? Something fell up. It's cold in here, Dad. Oh. You see that? Oh. Oh. Uh, guys, something absolutely unbelievable has just happened in here and we need to check the cameras back to make sure that we've got it. It almost sounded like a champagne bottle getting popped. Yeah, that's the best, yeah. This short wave of activity seems to cause a spark in the building as things continue to happen. We move Claire, Simon and Katie into room 6, while Brandon remains on the corridor as the vessel for the Estes method. We've put Brandon on the corridor by himself, exactly where the shadow figure was captured. He's the vessel for the Estes method, we've moved the other three guys into room 6. This is a ridiculously active night so far. Yeah, I've just been helping Peter close down downstairs and he's telling me that he's getting communication through his walkies downstairs to keep going off. That's not normally the case downstairs, so he's a bit petrified. I've let him close up early because he's a bit freaked out. What, it's like interference? No, just, I mean, I experienced it once where the walkie-talkie was actually saying, Harry, Harry, while I was behind the bar. Um, as well, Demi was on, on shift with me, so I went up to check if the kitchen was... But I knew there was no chefs in. There was no one in the kitchen, so there's no way of anyone being able to communicate with me. And it just seems very random, the fact that it was saying Harry, so it wasn't radio interference. Why don't you come forward? Why don't you show yourself? So that they're hiding away. Make yourself known. Come forward towards my voice. Come and show yourself.
something has just moved across the corridor right next to Brandon, but he cannot hear this due to having his headphones plugged into the spirit box. This is utterly chilling, and as you can see, this is not caused by him. Moments later, this happens. What was that? Wow. I heard that. Nothing fell out of my pocket, that wasn't behind me. There was an almighty bang in room six where we are now. Hand it again. Twice. In a bit. That was right behind me. It is Tuesday night at my haunted hotel and the building seems alive with activity. And just before we reach the midway stage of the investigation, Simon and Claire head into room three, where they are about to capture yet another chilling piece of evidence, which is a clear example of how intelligent some of the hauntings are here. Is anybody else in the room? Show yourself. Come forward. Make a knock, a loud knock. What was that? Oh, was that two knocks then? Was that the bathroom? I've never heard anything I was like that. Say, I've never heard it in the bathroom before. Right on cue. Make a knock, a loud knock. What was that? Hi, I'm Brandon. I'm Katie. Uh, it's been a good night so far, hasn't Pretty it? Pretty surreal experience, to be honest. Yeah, uh, it's been, uh, we've had some activity in room, what was it, it's the nursery's room five, isn't it? We heard a scratching on the door, we've heard a couple of footsteps outside. Room six, I've sat in the chair, um, heard two bangs on the floor, felt the vibration on the new feet. Yeah, there was uh, room five as well when we went in there, there was a lot of outdoor activity, at least in the corridor. Well, it, was, it was sort of debunked then, but there was still some constant footsteps. So Yeah, it's been a pretty surreal experience. Uh, can't wait to see what happens for the rest of the night, to be honest. Okay. I'm Simon. I'm Claire. Uh, we've come tonight, uh, first time at my haunted hotel. Um, we've heard quite a lot of, quite a lot of uh, bangs, um, knocks, Dragging up the corridor. Um, We've had weird? quite a lot of activity in room six, where Katie was sitting in a chair. There was two loud bangs, which made her absolutely jump out of her skin. So, this is the moment of truth, Mr. Moss. Kinder Bueno, Rocky Road Brownie thing. Yeah, is it? Oh yes. Really? Thank you, Cheshire Paranormal Society. <laughs> Stop there, is it? Yeah. Ghost Hunters of Cheshire. There you go. Oh yeah. My Haunted Hotel food porn. <laughs> The investigation moves on as we challenge the guests with various experiments. With nothing concrete seeming to manifest, we join in the old brothel where a groundbreaking event is about to happen. Alright, we have joined everybody in the brothel section now. It has been a very, very strange night indeed. and We have been able to capture multiple pieces of evidence, which has been great. Master. Word master has just come through the Alice box and um, we are going to be arming the Intravox device shortly to see if we can really end this investigation with a bang. Charles Griffith, are you present here with us in this room? I wish to hear your voice sir. 
Yeah. Yeah. What did he say? What did he say? I have no idea. Charles? Is this you? We cannot work out what this male voice says, but moments later, another voice manifests, and now it is clear that a male entity, which we believe to be Charles Griffith, is present with us. Who else is here? Are any of the ladies here? Do not let this man stop you from speaking with us. Yeah, it sounded like a... <laughs> it sounded like a cough. No, it sounded like a growl type of... I wish to hear your voice, sir. Oh, what was that? Let this man stop you from speaking with him. That sounded like a growl. We've had quite a bit of activity, haven't we, between ourselves. We're going to go bang some knocks, some sort of rumbles, scrapes. I found tonight pretty incredible to be honest. Amazing. Especially being in the wardrobe in within minutes of being sat there. Out of all the investigations that we've done ourselves, um, tonight's certainly been something different, hasn't it? Something unique. Well, Overall. Most definitely. Yeah. We'll um, challenge the night yeah. and see what we can come up with. Yeah. For you guys. Most definitely. Find as like much as possible. Other investigation we've been on as well. Find yeah. as much as possible in the time we have, isn't it? So. Yeah, definitely. I just don't fancy anything being thrown. Most definitely, like to come back. Oh yes, yeah, thousand percent yeah. coming back. It's been fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Another night over, Danny. It's been active. Yeah, it's been a really good night. Lovely guests. Loads of energy. That's what it's all about. That's the key. It is. Did we figure out what that bang was before? Nope. I haven't got a clue. There's been bangs while we've been chatting to the guests. Very weird. The guys, we've got another two rooms in tomorrow. And um, we'll be back. This is going to be a long ass week. See you tomorrow. Bye. It is Wednesday at my haunted hotel as our busy week continues. We were experiencing a very active period and things were about to get even more substantial as two more rooms check in. We're back. It's now Wednesday, I think. <laughs> it's all like merging into one, isn't it? I don't know where I am. Me and Stelios are a bit delirious because um, we're very tired. We have slogged away for three days now and we have another one in tomorrow in fact we've got our busiest night tomorrow night and I'm seriously considering hitting the bottle don't be hitting that bottle look last night was active very very active and the guys stayed away till five o'clock in the morning investigating yeah <laughs> uh, tonight we're going to put people in room one again because room one is really interesting at the moment. We're also going to put the other two in room four. Um, who knows what will happen tonight, but I'm still getting over that champagne bottle popping in the function room last night, which obviously wasn't a champagne bottle, but it was interesting. And it's so annoying that we can't actually determine what it is. That's the annoying thing for me. Yeah. Another residual sound, maybe. But look... It's active here at my haunted hotel. It is spooky season. We're back. <laughs> Brett Jones. Let's do this. Oh, it's more close to that, isn't it? Ooh. Oh, that's a little bit iron. Oh, this is the one with the little walk through. Welcome to the room store. You've been chosen to stay in one of the most haunted rooms in the hotel. <laughs> we encourage you to explore your room as you may find some hidden information on how to conjecture and title of occupation. Your room has been decorated to evoke spirits that have been recorded in this room. Check out the trial game method. Love to be done that. We'll pull that. One hour into the investigation, and we have moved Bethan and Amy into room five, while Steve and Chan move into room two. All of a sudden, both rooms radio in to say they've heard footsteps in the corridor. Big creaky footsteps in the corridor. Big ones. 
both radios have just come through saying they've heard walking outside in the corridor. We need to check that back right now. Bethan then does something insane and moves the famous doll in room 5 as she puts it back on the shelf. This then happens five minutes later. Children, the ones play. Billy? Sarah? <laughs> Harry, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? I don't know. I can't hear anything. She's just freaking out. <laughs> the doll moved in room 5 and we now move Bethan and Amy into room 6 while Steve and Chan take their place in 5. Another wave of activity hits and Harry and I cannot believe what is happening. I cannot believe what is happening and I can't keep up with any of it. It's nuts. We've got girls crying, screaming, running out of rooms. There's knocks, bangs. I'm really sorry, I'm going to have to have a chocolate, I'm too stressed. It's, it's, it's crazy, mate. It's probably more crazy than last night. I can't deal with people crying on me, but um, I felt so sorry for Amy, bless her. <sighs> Gary, what do you think? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're tired, aren't you? Yeah. F***ing <laughs> delusional. Rebecca! Pagan. Pagan thing. This is the room Lady Snake was in. Okay. And that box, like a boom box, where you hear bangs from. So if you hear a bang from there, it's most likely linked to the. Oh, Do you yeah. want the torch? Hey, she have to turn it on for Yes, please. I'm like still shaking. I still feel sick. I find a button on the torch. Did you do atrocities in this room, Charles? No! Fucking hell! Oh shit! Just spat my food out of there. Jesus Christ, two f***ing big, big bangs then. Wow. Is that what you mean? Yep. Yeah. Straight away. Straight in by the boom box. Straight. <laughs> oh my, what is going on? This is all too much for Amy, and she quits the investigation. It is very difficult to describe how the building felt at this moment, but something had stirred, and we were capturing it all as it happened. Uh, hi, my name's Amy, and this has been a completely emotional whirlwind for me. I don't know about you. I mean, you've, yeah. you've seen I'm fine. I'm yeah. Um, I've been here before, it's my second time. I say it's, it's just oh, I think we were in um, the room with the dolls, and the doll literally just fell off the shelf after Beth decided to move it and it's literally completely shut me up. I felt sick and I was shaking and I'm still not okay now. Um, so it'd be interesting to see how the rest of the night goes. It just shows how active this place is. Yeah, absolutely. It just, it's my first yeah. time here and I wasn't expecting to get this much action. It's crazy. things or certain things you, you do can trigger something else. Yeah, absolutely. Or what it reacts to. Yeah, absolutely. Good evening. Uh, my name's Steve. And I'm Shan. Um, yeah, it's our first time here this tonight, and it's been absolutely incredible up to now, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, we weren't uh, expecting much. No, really, no, I'm a bit of a pessimist, and I'm a little bit of a skeptic, and I honestly didn't expect to encounter very much, or very much to happen, but tonight, it's um, proved me very much wrong yeah. at the moment. We've had some walking, quite yeah, a bit of walking footsteps, in there, footsteps, yeah. some incredible yeah. bangs, Yeah. and um, yeah, it's been... Cat ball's gone off a couple of times, isn't yeah. it? Everything I could, it's been everything we could have hoped for at the moment, so yeah. fingers crossed, it carries on like that the rest of the night. It does, hopefully, yeah. So, it's happening again. Weird noises going on in the function room. But more importantly, we've got heroes tonight. 
sour lollipops. Danny's favourite, a joystick. <laughs> and we've got Gary. Oh, Gary the ghost. Got it. Got it. Uh, what the f? You f mother again. Hello. Steve, Shan and Bethan join together as they conduct the Estes method in the downstairs bar, but it is an hour later that they capture something compelling as they conduct a call out session on the top floor corridor. We are joined by Amy because Hi. basically she was too scared to um, carry on, which, you know, there's no harm in saying that, but then I kind of freaked her out even more yes. by saying that there was a man laughing in the function room months ago. So we've brought her here into the control room and she's about to try our very special um Grog the Carner. Oh yeah. <laughs> Good won't be scared after this. So uh, she'll, okay. she'll sleep very well. Oh I was supposed to be a little bit worse. It's not too bad. Really? Oh I just I made me crit No? It's okay? I've had worse shots than that. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Oh god. Um, it kind of has that afterburn, I think. Yeah, I am experiencing that now. <laughs> You're in room five. Yeah, creaking out. What's that corridor called? Um, that's on the way to six. The corridor on the way to six. We heard creaking on the corridor on the way to six. Yeah, creaking out. Yeah, freaking out. Finally, we join in the old brothel in an attempt to build on what had happened the previous night whilst using the Intravox device. All right, we are now joined by everybody around the table in the brothel section. We have the Intravox device rolling through in the red room. Tonight has been a little bit crazy. Amy, how are you feeling? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens, guys. Charles Griffith. You can hear my voice, sir. Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> life. <laughs> what did that say? I, I thought you said West. West, West, or yeah. The exact same thing happened last night. Did it? As soon as I said Charles Griffith, we had a man's voice come through. Charles! What did you just say to me, sir? Astonishing. A second night in a row, the same male voice as on Tuesday manifests, but this time it is extremely clear, and it either says West or Yes. Moments later, we witnessed a huge moment. Did you acquire this in from the home family? What year is it, Charles? Whoa! <laughs> this is a major moment as I ask if Charles acquired the building from the home family. And I also ask what year it is. We believe Charles responds saying, the deeds. Is it possible that the information we are asking for is in the deeds? We are all left gobsmacked. We found a night, went far beyond our expectations to be honest. Yeah. It's been a fantastic evening. Yeah. And um, it just feels like so much has happened that yeah. I don't expect half of it will be on, the, on, the, on YouTube. But <laughs> there you go, it's what it is. It's been a great night. Um, I would say there was a banging on the door. The highlight, yeah. Early on in the evening, that you just could not believe it wasn't somebody outside there knocking on it. It yeah. was really loud. Well, well, the Intervox worked. Yeah, yeah. the voice yeah. was coming through but on that. Wow. Hopefully, the guys will be able to see yeah. it on YouTube. It was, uh, the Intervox stuff was great. Yeah. West was one of the ones that came through uh, very clearly. Yeah. And it was either the deeds or deed. Um, not sure which, but 
something like the that. The word deed was incredibly clear. Yeah. Um, but what was around it, not so sure. But yeah, yeah. very, very, very interesting. Yeah. yeah good. Charles Griffith. You can hear my voice, sir. Oh, f my <laughs> life. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. I would say most places that have got a lot of hype behind it fail to live up to it. But I would say tonight, this has definitely lived up to more than my expectation, yeah. which is unusual. You know, and obviously unusual. having the cameras going because <clears throat> things, you know, places are haunted. Things don't always happen in the yeah. hours that people are going to investigate. Yeah. Um, as we all know, you know, and often you know the day, fact yeah. that you can, you've got a rewind on time. Yeah. You know, so you can zoom in. You know, you can message centre and say, I think I heard this, and then you can check it out and debunk it or clarify that it's correct. Yeah. Uh, I have found tonight extremely overwhelming and creepy. Um, yeah, I don't know about you. I loved it. <laughs> I'm even real. It's a difference between us. <laughs> yes, yeah. I've loved all the different stuff that's happened tonight. I just, I've been paranormal hunting before many, many times, but I've never experienced anything like this and it's completely shaken me up. And yeah, I'm mind blown. Um, so being in the room with the dolls, I think room five, it is, and um, Beth decided it'd be a good idea to move that one doll that was sat in the corner, and then moments later it fell over on its own. And again, and it just completely shook me up. It's such a massive movement that I keep, that can't seem to figure out how to explain. So yeah. Um, I think moving the doll was an all right decision to do, because <laughs> it just shows that it was some, if the smallest yeah. movement or change, how it reacts and how it affects the building. I mean, I guess, like, as much as it was a not nice experience without doing that, you wouldn't have got that evidence. It so, triggers it. Yeah, positive in the grand scheme of things. As the guests head off to their rooms, Harry and I say our goodbyes to them. But then something happens which we can only describe as a demonic sound coming from Harry himself. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. Cheers. Bye -bye. Oh, <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm uh, I'm a bit upset. <laughs> oh, my I'm crying with laughter. Oh, something really paranormal has just happened, and um, yeah, we just heard some weird noise up there. <laughs> Oh my god, um, wow, what a night. What an answer tonight. You missed out this week, Brett. Uh, yeah, yeah. We've, um, look, it's been interesting. It's been, uh, it's. <laughs> I'll <laughs> see you tomorrow. Thursday night and the end of a crazy week here in Chester. It was time to investigate again, but first, we had to wish a certain person a happy birthday. Thursday night, Danny Moss. I'm not going to lie, I'm looking forward to the end of this one. I'd say I was going to get a lie in, but I'm not. My eyes are crispy. <laughs> Guys, we're back. It's us. Happy birthday to our very own Mr. Hustleburger Brett Jones, who can't be here today because he's swanning off. Um, but look, we're tired, but it is being so worth it because this week it's been an, every week's built on the on the night before, hasn't it? It's, every day's being built on the night before. You were so right when you said that sort of the beginning to mid October is so active here, and it really has been this week. I've never seen anything like it this week. As well as us watching the screens, we're getting entertained from the noises just in the um, in the function room and in the brothel area. So hopefully, it'll be the same again tonight. Four rooms were booked in, and we had spread them to rooms one, three, five, and six. Would we be able to build on the previous nights? We were about to find out. I was fine, there, I'm sleeping. No. <laughs> yeah, so night vision makes it look really nice. Yeah. 
Oh, there's stuff on the bed. Oh, there's a pillow on the bed. Oh, okay. I'm already on like high alert of Me too. everything that's going on. This is cool. All right. Mirrors. Oh, Jesus Christ. Come on. Where the f are the lights? I don't know. How's it? Are you sure we're in this thing? Yeah. Hi. Are you sure? Yeah, but it's the beams were there, but it might have been this put there. Gary! Got it! We love Gary, and uh, we've got to love Shan, because she's brought Gary to us. It's like, it's like your long lost love returning home, really, isn't it? I yeah. feel like he's always meant to be here. And he's a happy ghost. He is. He's um, pulling a little cheeky tongue there as well. Um, but Gary, Gary is our new mascot. He's our new brat. He is. He's bratonite. All of a sudden, something takes us by surprise as Katie and Ange get very excited in room three. Well, Saul is back. Back again. Forgot the lyrics. Guess. What's the next word? Um, tell a friend. That's it, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> big news has just entered the control room here. Er... Uh, Saw the drunk women in room three running. I thought, what's happened? Radio through. They have captured something incredible on their phone. They've been using their phone recorder as a kind of to, to capture EVPs. I am going to run up there now with one of the handheld cameras to find out exactly what it is. But by the sounds of it, it's incredible. It's a trap. <laughs> Don't. I'm scared. All right, guys, I have just entered room three right now where Katie has captured something in the bathroom of room three and recorded it on her phone. Can you play that for us? Whoa. <coughs> can you just play that one more time? Of course I can. That couldn't be the baby next door, though. I was gonna, yeah, that can't be there's, 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 anything. Yeah. That's way too clear for it to be anywhere else other than That here. actually sounds like it's coming from in the bathroom. Yeah, bathroom. It has yeah. that ambient tone to it. It even to it. has the, sort of like in the echo the door. kind of thing going on. Wow, uh, that's incredible. <sighs> Two hours then drag by as nothing at all happens. We move guests around the top floor in hopes of triggering something. And this eventually pays off in room four of all places. Oh, what the? What? That sounded like it came from the wardrobe. So from in there? It sounded like it came from in the wardrobe. We do all that we can to debunk this, but we find no explanation for the knocking, and it seems to happen as soon as Rob starts playing white noise from his phone. They then head to room five. Oh, what the? What? <clears throat> Step away for me. Just to confirm, touch it again for me. Can you touch it fast, you? Can you touch the device again? Brilliant. Oh. That's crazy. Suddenly, a bizarre thing happens in room six as our camera's audio cuts out completely. And it could not be worse timing as a huge bang erupts next to Gavin. It is so loud that Rob and Emma can hear it in room five. Stay away. It. So if it goes off, I literally can't. Yeah. What, what was that? What was that? Something over there. Is that a bang? Yeah. So Rob is giving his best blue steel impression. <laughs> <laughs> That's one handsome guy to look in the camera there, isn't he? Gavin and Sophie return to room five, and they are about to witness something amazing. Oh God! Oh! Huh? Oh God! Oh, the 
dark. If that was you touching that REM pod, do it again. I command you. Do it again. Do it again. Knock that doll off the shelf. Oh God! Here we go. Here we go. And then guess what? Oh, off. Knock that doll off the shelf now. Oh my God! Do it. Oh. Oh, I love it! I love it! Oh! I love it! What was that bang? Come on, knock that doll off the shelf now! Oh. Do it! Oh. If you're going to get shit in the rem pod off, knock the doll off! Oh god! Knock the doll off! Please tell me that wasn't a baby. I've just heard a baby. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, oh I don't know God. if you picked that up on the camera in this room, but the REM pod was going off on command, and we're sure we've just heard a really fine baby crying. We were unable to capture the sound of a baby crying, but once again, our guests are hearing this audio, and with intelligent responses via the REM device next to the doll, this was a compelling session. Another quiet period hits, but as Rob and Emma enter room two, they are about to run an incredible Estes session. In the meantime, Gavin and Rob in room six witness this. We are not claiming this is paranormal, but what do you think? Not here to cause any harm. I just checked. <laughs> mm, I don't mean. Don't have to use the board. We can use our energy to do anything else. My name's Emma. Is there anything you'd like me to know? Is there anything you'd like to tell us about this room? Hear me? I'm listening, what's your Man voice. How many people are here? How many spirits are here? Can you tell me something about this room? Oh. Man voice witch. Was there a witch in here? Capture me. Did the witch do something to you? Is there a male spirit in this room? Dead man, please or please. Do you need help? You need, I need you, woman. What, would, what do you need me to do? Is there anything that you want Rob to do? Is there something that we can do for you? I've heard there's also children in this hotel. Is there a child here that wants to talk? Not true. There's no children. What about the baby that was crying earlier? Is there a baby here? Die. Did a baby die here? We heard a baby crying earlier. Is that the baby that died here? Did you just 
make that noise. Can you tell me the name of the baby? Four. It's like a woman gasping. Was it your baby? Moments later, the building falls into an eerie, dormant state, and thick fog descends over Chester as we wrap up a mind-blowing week. Walkie Talkie fell off the bedside cabinet in room six. Um, For no apparent reason. Which room were we in when they, we had the knocking? That was room four, wasn't it? In the hallway, nobody there. Yeah, because I got up to have a look, didn't I? Uh, we find tonight quite interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Experienced quite a few things. We did. And uh, hope to come back. Hearing the baby cry, yeah, definitely was uh, one of the highlights. Yeah, excited to see what happens for the rest of the night, to be honest. Can't yeah, wait. really excited. <laughs> yeah, it's been good, hasn't it? There's, yeah. there's been periods of high activity and then really calming and relaxed. There's been a lot of intelligent responses as well, so mm. it's been... It's been a fun night, but it's been quite surprised with how many intelligent responses there have been to the yeah. questions that we've asked. Yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. Knocking on the, the wardrobe. Knocking. Can't explain that at all. There was nothing that would give yeah. that reason. It's and crystal I think clear. It was right there. We even felt the vibrations and we replicated the noise by knocking on the inside of the wardrobe. Yeah. It was exactly that yeah. noise. And I think the girl, the woman screaming on the white noise machine, yeah. that was that was freaky. That was that creepy. Really, yeah, yeah, really creepy. Yeah. A man it Oh, a woman screaming, man, sounds French. It's been, we've found tonight really, really good. Yeah, it's been really interesting. Um, yeah, some of the stuff that's happened, I just can't believe. <laughs> um, that, the REM pod, the, the answers with the REM pod has definitely been the highlight of the night. Um, I think the, the highlights were with the doll. in room six, when they had that bang from underneath, that it was either kicking the chair or the floor underneath and it vibrated mm, the chair. Yeah, and it was a really loud bang yeah. as well. Um, yeah, so you can um, book tickets to join us on Friday nights. Um, it's not every Friday night, but we've got lots of Friday dates available. Um, if you want to join us here, it's a 9 till 2 p.m. No, 2 a.m., sorry. Um, and what's the website? I think Facebook page is easier. It's yeah, after Facebook. After spooky events. If you head over to the page, you'll see the website and you can book via the website on there. And we hope to see you soon. So it's been an epic week. Uh, Monday starts off really well. Tuesday built on that. Wednesday went insane. Tonight was a little, wasn't as busy. Like a Tuesday really, wasn't it? It was a bit quieter. Um, but still some epic stuff. Lovely guests. Full house tonight, which was cool. Uh, a lot of different people. Wow, what a week. Um, it's fair to say Harry and I have absolutely put in a shift this week. It's been really hard going just because of the, the quick turnaround of getting the, the episode done, filming four nights. Uh, but wow, incredible bunch of guests that have been here and the evidence this week has been one that will, will go down in history. I think it's been one of the most active weeks here at my haunted hotel and Birthday boy Brett Jones Hustlerberger has really missed out on this one, but we'll be back next week. We have another busy week, and of course, then is the ultimate thing the Halloween party here at my haunted hotel, which is just a fantastic moment for everybody who's been here, everybody who's a huge fan of the show, to come in and, and just relax with us and party with us and have a, a really good night in the UK's number one location, guys. Good night. All Hallows Eve is just one week away, the spookiest night of the year. But this has been a week dominated by compelling evidence as our cameras continue to document everything inside this unique building. Our guests settle in for the night and for all who are following this journey, the week ahead would be one of excitement and anticipation. Halloween is almost here. We'll see you soon.